So, guten Abend. Ja, das auch mit frei. Lass uns mit Gebet. Ja. Dear Father in heaven, Lieber Vater im Himmel, thank you that we can continue the classes. danke, dass wir mit den Klassen fortsetzen können. And, uh, that your grace is every day new. Und dass deine Gnade jeden Tag neu ist. And that you promised the necessary grace for every day. Und dass du verheißt hast, dass wir die notwendige Gnade für einen jeden Tag haben werden. And we ask you to please now bless us in our endeavors to understand your word. So wir bitten jetzt, dass du uns segnest in unsere Bemühungen, dein Wort zu verstehen. And that you would uh, please open us also the book of Zephaniah. Und dass du uns auch das Buch Zephania auftun würdest. And that you would instruct us and uh, teach us dass du uns unterweisen und lehren würdest. And that we can come to right understandings of uh, the verses contained therein. So dass wir zu um, den richtigen Verständnis, den Versen, die da drin enthalten sind, kommen können. We thank you for your promise that if you ask, we shall receive. Und wir danken dir für deine Verheißung, dass wenn wir bitten, wir werden erhalten. And that uh, the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Und dass der Heilige Geist uns in alle Wahrheit hineinführen würde. And we ask and pray in Jesus name. Und wir bitten und beten in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let us turn now to the book of Zephaniah. So, schlagen wir das Buch Zephaniah auf. After Habakkuk and before Haggai. Es ist nach dem Buch Habakkuk und vor dem Buch Haggai. Okay, good. So, and in the last classes, but especially also in the last seminar in Buchenau. And in den letzten Klassen, aber insbesondere also den letzten Seminar in Buchenau. Uh, we look at the book of Joel. Wir haben das Buch Joel angeschaut. And there Joel was warning about the, against the day of the Lord, right? Und da hat Joel gewarnt gegen den Tag des Herrn. And we studied that he's standing here at the sign. Wir haben studiert, dass er hier mm -hmm. bei den Zeichen steht. And he says, um, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, right? Und er sagt, stößt in die Posaune in Zion und gebt eine Alarm in meinen heiligen Berg. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Denn der Tag des Herrn steht bevor. And it comes as a destruction from the Almighty, right? Kommt wie eine Zerstörung vom Allmächtigen her. And it's this northern army that is coming to destroy Jerusalem. Und das ist diese Nordarmee, der kommt, um Jerusalem zu zerstören. Okay, and as we will now read Zephania, or Zephania, so wie wir jetzt Zephania lesen werden, uh, we can see a similar message given by him. Da werden wir sehen, ein ähnliches Botschaft, die von ihm gegeben wird. Okay, so... Maybe because we're not so familiar with these chapters, I mean we all know them, but maybe not so fresh in our memory. So, vielleicht weil diese uh, Kapiteln sind nicht so frisch in unserem in Gedanken. I would suggest suggest to just first read through chapter one together. Ich schlage vor, dass wir gemeinsam Kapitel 1 durchlesen. And uh, let us read three verses each. Und die Klasse rum werden wir jeweils drei Versen lesen. Okay, I will start, and then we can just read through it. It says, The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the Chemerims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm 
and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also I will punish all those that weep on the threshold which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass as all. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, that there shall be the noise of the cry from the fish gate and, and howling from the second and a great crashing from the gulf. Howl, you inhabitants of Makhdash, for all the merchant people are cut down and all that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass that at that Time that I will search Jerusalem with a candle and punish the men that are settled on their lease. They that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he, he do evil. Therefore, the goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also be houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but no drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wistness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be de devoured by the fire of, of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Okay, thank you. So here we can see also a judgment message on Jerusalem. Yes? Here can we see also a judgment message on Jerusalem. Okay, so let us first begin in verse 1. Begin with Ruth, so verse 1. So here we can see in whose days was he preaching back then. So, so in welchen Tagen predigte ah. er damals? King Amos. Uh, the, the, the days of Josiah, the king ah. of Judah, so right? In den Tagen von Josiah, der König Judas. Okay, and then he was predicting basically the coming punishment on Jerusalem. Okay. Und dann sagte er voraus, dass kommende Bestrafung auf Jeru Jerusalem vor. Okay, so days of Josiah, he dealt with than Babylon, okay? In the days of Josiah. Uh, he dealt with Babylon. Also in Tage Josias uh, handelte um, mit Babylon ab. Okay, so Babylon was then the power, historically, that came to destroy Jerusalem. Okay. So Babylon war der Macht in der Geschichte damals, die kam um Jerusalem zu zerstören. Okay, so <coughs> let's now just continue verse 2 and 3. Lesen wir weiter die Versen 2 und 3. It says, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. So, what does verse 2 and 3 remind you of? Or what can it remind you of? So, an was erinnert uns oder an was kann Verse 2 und 3 uns erinnern? Well, I mean, consume, devour, eat. Okay, that's... Vier Insekten, die but it speaks about he will consume man and, and beast, beast right? And all the fowls of heaven and... Mensch und Tier und alle Vogel des Himmels verzehren. And verse 2 is, he consumes all things from off the land. Mm. Verse 2, alles vom Lande her verzehrt er. Yeah, the flood, right? So, mm. Das Sintflut. Okay, so mm. keep your finger here, let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Halte den Platz hier, geht zum 1. Mose Kapitel 6. Ja, 
And uh, let us read verses 5 to 7. Und wir lesen die Versen 5 bis 7. Or until 8 even. Oder sogar bis 8. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil, was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in, at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So what do we see here? What can we here see? Same illustration. Same illustration. Right? Same darstellung. But who would Noah represent in this illustrate? Uh, in this illustration? Noah in this illustration? Yes, okay. 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 And what else is he illustrate? Was noch ist er? Because he says, I will destroy all. Yeah, he would be illustrating the remnant, right? Er stellt den Überrest dar, weil der Herr sagte, ich werde alles zerstören. So he destroys all apart from him and his family, right? Er zerstört allen außer er und seine Familie. The flood of Amos. Now the flood of Egypt. The flood was marking the destruction of the. What's like destruction of the same tribes, but. Yes, but let us go now to Daniel 9, okay, because there we also find the flood. Daniel 9, weil da finden wir auch den Flut. And it's the 70 weeks prophecy, okay. Es ist die 70 Wochen Prophezeiung. And let us read here verse 24. Lesen wir Vers 24. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So who is the, let's say, uh, upon whom is the prophecy here? So, über wen ist diese Prophezei? Yeah, God's people in Jerusalem. Right? Volk in Jerusalem. The holy city. Right? Okay, and then it says here, verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end of shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So what do we see here? Was können wir hier sehen? When Jerusalem gets destroyed, it Wenn gets Jerusalem destroyed by a... Zerstört wird, es wird zerstört durch einen Flut. Yes. Okay, so therefore the flood also typifies the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay. So, deswegen der Flut schattet auch die Zerstörung Jerusalems vor uns. Okay, when we go back to Zephaniah 1. So, gehen wir zurück zu Zephaniah 1. So we saw he says he will consume all of them. Okay. So we have seen that he said that he will destroy all of them. And now let's continue in verse 4. Let's read further in verse 4. It says, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the Gemarins with the priests. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. So, verse 6. Verse 6. Whom will he destroy? Wem wird er zerstören? Yeah, those that turn back from the Lord and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him, right? Diejenigen, die vom Herrn abgekehrt haben und diejenigen, die ihm nichts gesucht haben, noch nach ihm gefragt haben. So, who did not inquire of the Lord? Und wer fragte nicht nach dem Herrn? Yes, okay. Diejenigen, die nichts gefragt haben. Okay, yeah. but, but there's, a, there's a story. We looked at this recently. At, uh, also, es gibt eine Geschichte, die wir neulich angeschaut haben. 
I mean, in this story, it's it's the king of the, if I remember correctly, the king of the northern uh, tribes. But still, you see the same principle. And he went to uh, which, but what's it called? Yeah, you have the witch of Endor. And the witch of Endor. But yes, but yeah, Balzebub, right? Yes, he went as Ekron. Yes, exactly. Okay. Also, Bob, der ging nach Ekron, aber auch äh, König Saul, der ging nach Endor. Okay, keep your finger here. Let's go to the story of Ekron, 2 Kings, chapter 1. Halt den Platz hier. Wir gehen zu der Geschichte von Ekron, 2. Könige, Kapitel 1. So, we cut off those that don't inquire of the Lord. Ja, right. Wir schneiden diejenigen ab, die nicht nach dem Herrn fragen. So, 2 Kings. Chapter 1. Zweite Könige, Kapitel 1. And let us read verses 1 to 4. Und wir lesen die Versen 1 bis 4. Then more prevailed against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron whether I shall recover of this disease. So who, whom is he inquiring of? So, wem, nach wem fragt er nach? Baalzebub. Baalzebub. No? Which is Baalzebub, right? Baalzebub. Baalzebub is Baalzebub. Yes, it's just here, it's called Baalzebub, but in Christ says Baalzebub, right? This is Baalzebub genannt, Christus nein, das Baalzebub. Okay. So, and Beelzebub, we all know, is a, just a, a different name for Satan. Beelzebub is an other name for Satan. Okay, so go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel, that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die, and Elijah departed. Okay, so here we can see it was pronounced upon him, he surely dies, right? So here can we see that it über ihm verkündet worden ist, dass er gewiss sterben wird. So what did he partake of? So an was nahm er teil? Yeah, spiritualism. Okay. Spiritismus. He ate the forbidden fruit, right? Er hat diese verbotene uh, Frucht gegessen. Because what did God say in Eden? And was sagte der Herr im Eden? Surely die. Yeah, you should surely die if you eat of it, right? Wenn du davon isst, dann werdet ihr gewiss sterben. Okay. And that's why she links in a quote this inquiring of Ekron, the bells of the God of Ekron with the witch of Endor, okay? Es gibt ein Zitat von Ellen White, wo sie verbindet dieses Nachfragen der Gott von Ekron mit uh, der Hexe von Endor. Okay, so what happened to Saul when he went there? Es geschah mit König Saul, als er dahin ging. Ja, close his probation, right? Gnadentür zugeschlossen. Okay, so and the punishment came upon him. Die Bestrafung kam über ihm. Okay, so let us therefore go back to Zephaniah 1. So, gehen wir zurück. So, Sephania 1. So, the Lord tells us already, therefore, if you go here, right, in this time, and you now inquire of the God of Ekron instead of the Lord. So, the Lord sagt uns bereits, dass wenn du diese Zeit dem Gott von Ekron nachfragst, anstelle von Gott nachzufragen. Yeah. I mean, the Lord gives you here this time to repent, but here he punishes you. Okay. Der Herr gibt uns diese Zeit, um Buße zu tun, aber hier bestraft er dich. Okay, so, and he also says, he will punish, in verse 6, them that are turned back from the Lord. Yes? In Vers 6, es sagt auch, dass er diejenigen bestrafen wird, die vom Herrn abgekehrt haben. And where do we see, uh, let's say, a living illustration of people that turned their back to the Lord? Und wo sehen wir ein lebendiges Beispiel davon, wo Menschen dem Herrn den Rücken gekehrt haben. Ja, yeah, 25 yes. Männer, right? Die mm -hmm. 25 uh, Männer, you mean a living example? Yeah, like a, like a, yeah, a physical example. Okay, yeah. I thought you meant a practical, 
present example, okay? Ein physisches Beispiel. 25 Männer am Tag. 25 Männer, let's keep your finger here, let's go there, Ezekiel chapter 8. Halte den Platz hier und geht dahin, das ist in Ezekiel 8. And do you know what Sister White says? The God of Ekron, what kind of God was it? Wisst ihr, was Ellen White sagt über der Gott von Ekron, was das für ein Gott sei? Okay, you can guess. Okay, we we'll probably already raten. Sun. Yeah, the sun god. Yes, yeah. the sun god. Okay, because here also the twenty-five men. Yes. Here in this Geschichte, these five and twenty men. So let us just begin. Maybe even the abomination before that, the third abomination, in verse thirteen. Fangen wir an in Vers 13 zu lesen, sogar der Groll noch davor. He said, also unto me turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So what did they do? Was taten sie hier in Vers 14? Uh, wept for Tammuz, right? Sie haben geheult nach Tammuz. And Tammuz is always in the arms of the mother, right? Und Tammuz befindet sich immer im Armen seines Mutters. And what did we learn? Tammuz is the... Was haben wir gelernt? Tammuz is was? Which kind of God? Was für ein Gott? The sun god. The sun god. Okay. So, and then verse 15. It's Vers 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see great abomination abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worship the sun toward the east. Okay, so here we can see they have their back towards God, right? So here can we see that they have their back towards the Lord. And they worship now the sun. Sie beten jetzt den Sonne, die Sonne an, also Satan. And therefore the Lord says in verse 17. Und deswegen sagt der Herr in Vers 17. And where are they when they do this? I mean physically, in which city were they? Und physisch, in welchen Stadt waren sie also dies Tag? Yeah, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Yeah, in the temple. Yes. In the temple. Yeah. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Zwei right? Männer gingen im Tempel hinauf, um zu beten. Okay, then verse 17 Vers 17 und 18. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So therefore, they now shut the door, just like when they went to the witch of Endor, right? Dem folglich, sie haben ihre Tür geschlossen, genauso als wenn sie zum Hexe von Endor ging. Or the god of Ekron. Oder den Nachfragen, den Gott von Ekron. Okay. And also, um, let us go to Hebrews, chapter 10. Buch Hebräer, Kapitel 10. Vers 35 to 35 bis 39. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So where is the test where you are tested to cast away your confidence? So wo ist der test, wo du getestet danach wirst, ob du dein Vertrauen wegwirfst? Yeah, final test. Right? The final yeah. test. When you come here, now you enter into this shaking time, right? When you here um, ankommst, then trittst du in diese Sichtungszeit hinein. Okay. But you need to have patience. Aber okay. Du musst Geduld haben da drin. Uh, just keep your finger here. Let us go to Luke 21. Und den Platz hier geht zu Lukas 21. 
But before these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and shall turn to you for testimony. Okay, so when, you're, when are you delivered up? So when are you ausgeliefert? And the sign, right? Yes. Okay. And then it goes on to say, And it shall turn to you for testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before, what ye shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which shall you add, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Okay, so what do you need? To have in this time here? So was brauchst du in when dieser Zeit, Periode hier, wo du ausgeliefert bist? Patience of the saints, yes. Der Geduld der Heiligen. And here is the patience of the saints, mm -hmm. and them that keep, keep, the keep, yeah, keep the commandments of God. Right? Ist der Geduld der Heiligen und diejenigen, die die Gebote Gottes halten. Yes. And I also want to patience. Yes. Ich auch. Ich brauche Geduld. Okay, so let's go back to Hebrews 10. So gehen wir zurück zu Hebräer 10. So verse 36 one more time. Verse 36, ein weiteres Mal. It says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So it's the will of God, right? To be delivered up here and to give the testimony. Die Wille Gottes, dass du hier ausgeliefert wirst und ein Zeugnis ablegst. And when you endure patiently all this affliction that is here upon you, you receive the promise, right? Wenn du geduldig ausharrst all das, was dir diese Drangsal, der auf dich hier kommt, dann am Ende hier erhältst du die Verheißung. Because it says in verse 37. Es sagt in Vers 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And he even cuts it short, right? Und er verkürzt es sogar auch noch. Vers 38. Vers 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Yes? Amen. Yes, exactly. Okay. So therefore, in this sense, uh, those that draw back or turn back, uh, they go into perdition. Okay? Diejenigen in diesem Sinne, die zurückziehen oder abkehren, sie gehen ins Verderben. Yes. Or that inquire of the God of Ekron. Okay. Okay. So they will be overflown by this flood. Sie werden überschwemmt werden mit diesem Flut. So I just want to show you, just remember this scripture here. Ich möchte Let's go also to Isaiah 8. Eine Schrift zeigen, gehen wir zu Isaiah 8. Just to show also besides Daniel 9. Ja. Dass wir sehen können, eine andere Geschichte außer Daniel 9. Daniel 9. Uh, the, the King of the North comes like a flood. Right? Der König des Nordens wie ein Flut einbricht. Oh. Yes. And also in Daniel 11, right, we read about he overflows and pass over. Right? Auch in Daniel 11, wie wir lesen können, dass er überflutet und uh, geht vorüber. So, Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. Verse uh, 7 to 8. Speaking about the Syrian, which is the king of the north. Says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord bring, bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria in all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of it, thy land, O Emmanuel. So here we can see the Syrian is also like a 
flood overflowing the land, right? Und wir sehen, der Erzähler wird beschrieben wie ein Flut, der das Land überschwemmt. Okay, so just another illustration. The king of the north also overflows like a flood. Okay. Eine weitere Darstellung, wie wir sehen können, der König des Nordens das Land wie ein Flut überschwemmt. Okay, now let us go back to Zephaniah. So gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Zephaniah. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. <coughs> so, therefore, in the verses 2 to 6, he basically pronounces what is coming. Yes? So in verses 2 to 6, he verkundet das, was uh, kommt. And this destruction of Jerusalem. So, by this disaster of Jerusalem. Now in verse 7, he just again repeats here what you need to consider before it comes. Okay. Here in verse 7, or from verse 7, and he wiederholt das, was du in Betracht ziehen musst, noch bevor es kommt. Because he says now, Then he said, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. What is the day of the Lord? Was yeah. ist der Tag bisher? Yes. Steht bevor. So, when the sign comes and you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Wenn das Zeichen kommt, wo du siehst Jerusalem mit Armeen umgeben. You know its desolation is nigh. Right? Dann wisst ihr, dass die Zerstörung Jerusalem steht bevor. Okay. Um, so, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Where do we see? An illustration where he bids his guests to come to his sacrifice. Wo sehen wir eine Darstellung, wo er seine Gäste einlädt, zu Opfer zu kommen? Yes, Matthew 22, exactly. Okay. Come to the marriage, right? I killed my fatlings. Ich habe meine gemästete Kalb geschlachtet. Okay. But then there came one with a. Aber dann kam einer. Citizen's garment. Okay. Mit ein Bürgergewand an. So let's see now in verse 8. So lass uns jetzt sehen, Vers 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Okay. So when he comes then to this day of punishment, he looks who has the citizen's garment and who has the genuine garment, right? So when er zum diese Zeit ankommt, wo er bestraft, dann er schaut, wer den Bürgergewand hat. What did you say you gewandt? Or the genuine. Ach, genuine. Oh, yeah. Oder der echte Gewand anhat. Okay. And the, those with strange apparel, which the citizen garment, he will punish, he said. Und diejenigen, die sehr fremde Gewänder anhaben, was gleich die Bürgergewand ist, er sagt, er wird sie bestrafen. So, and we know all the parables are. Und wir wissen, dass alle Gleichnisse sind. One parable. Sind okay. Ein Gleichnis. So the one with, with the citizen's garment is therefore the foolish virgins, the tares, the Pharisee. Derjenige mit dem Bürgergewand anhat, ist der ähm, törichte Jungfrau, ähm, der Pharisäer, also den Unkraut. And, and all so these other characters of the parables, and and all these wicked characters. All diese andere ähm, böse Charakter von den jeweiligen verschiedenen Gleichnissen. Okay, let us continue in verse 9. Lesen wir weiter in Vers 9. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and an howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Howl ye inhabitants of Magtish, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. In Magtesh, yeah, when you I looked it up, I didn't know what it means. Okay. Magtesh, also ich habe nachgeschaut, ich wusste nicht, was das heiße. Uh, it says here inhabitants of Magtesh, right? So it's, it's a place. Einwohnern Magtesh, also es ist ein Ort. And uh, according to the Strongs, if I remember correctly, it was like a part of Jerusalem. Und gemäß uh, den Konkordanz, den Strongs Konkordanz, so, wie ich mich recht erinnere, es ist ein Teil Jerusalems. Okay, it was like a place where all the merchant people gathered. Yeah. Das war ein Ort, wo die ganzen Handelsleute sich versammelten. 
In den Querverweis oder Nebenbemerkungen in der Bibel ist sagt, es ist der Handelsstraße. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, and here it says in the Strong's place in Jerusalem. Okay. Und in den Strong's Konkordanz ist sagt ein Ort in Jerusalem. Okay, so and, this, and we know that when Christ came to cleanse the temple, wir wissen, dass wenn Christus ankam, um den Tempel zu reinigen, whom did he cast out? Wem trieb er hinaus? Oh, the merchants, right? Und den Handelsleuten. The money changers. Die okay. Geldwechsler. We know Christ comes here suddenly to his temple, right? Wir wissen, dass Christus hier plötzlich zu seinem Tempel ankommt. So, and all those that cling to the money changers, they will be punished Und with them. Okay. Diejenigen, die an ihren Geldwechslern festklammern, werden mit ihnen bestraft werden. Okay, Vers 12. Vers 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Okay, so what do they say? So was sagen sie, Vers 12? Lord will not punish, right? Der Herr wird nicht bestraft. God is not seeing. Okay. God sieht nicht alles. And there are many scriptures in the Bible that speak about this, but let's just go to Jeremiah 5. Und es gibt viele ähm, Schriftstellen in der Bibel, die darüber sprechen, aber wir gehen zu einem, also Jeremia 5. Jeremiah 5, beginning in verse 10. In Jeremia 5, und fangen wir in Vers 10 an zu lesen. So when the people say, yeah, the Lord will neither do good nor evil, what kind of spirit is this? So when the Menschen sagen, der Herr wird weder Gutes noch Böses tun, was für ein Geist ist das? Yeah, careless and indifferent, right? Sorglos und gleichgültig. Okay. So when we know that when the shaking comes, there's the two classes, right? One earnestly praying, the other one careless and indifferent. Okay. Wir wissen, dass wenn die Sichtung kommt, es gibt zwei Klassen. Die eine, die ernsthaft beten und die andere, die sorglos und uninteressiert sind. So, Vers 10. Vers 10. Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have, dwelt very, have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them, thus shall it be done unto them. So what did they say in verse 12? So was sagten sie in Vers 12? Uh, no evil will come upon us, okay. Nichts Böses wird uns befallen. But in the chapter before, in the Jeremiah said, the evil cometh from the north, right? In the Kapitel zuvor in Jeremiah, er sagte, das Böse kommt vom Norden her. Blow the trumpet, right? Stößt in die Posaune. So, Jeremiah is giving the message like Joel, here, blow the trumpet in Zion, right? So, Jeremiah, er gibt die Botschaft, genauso eben wie Joel es gibt, stößt in die Posaune in Zion. But then there are these people in Jerusalem saying, ah, yeah, not really, okay? Aber dann gibt es diese einigen in Jerusalem, die sagen so, ja, wahrscheinlich, oder nicht wirklich. So, and also let us go to Jeremiah 23. Gehen wir auch zu Jeremia 23, Vers 17. Kapitel 23 und Vers 17. Says, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Okay, so they also say, they just deny the very message of this time. Okay. So, see, sie verleugnen die um, gegenwärtige Botschaft dieser Zeit. That the evil would come out of the north. Der Botschaft, dass diese Böses aus dem Norden her kommen wird. Okay, so 
Let us go back to Zephaniah. So gehen wir zurück zu Zephaniah. Therefore, their, their goods shall become a booty. Booty to whom? Also, a boy to to whom? The person who destroyed them. Yes, to Gog and Magog, right? Die die sich also Gog und Magog. Or the Assyrian. Or the Assyrian. Because they come to take his prey and to take his spoil. Right? Kommen, um eine Raube und eine Beute zu so, therefore, the goods become shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, which day? Welcher Tag ist ein Tag des Sohns? Ein Tag des Herrn eben. A day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness, wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. So it says here in verse 15, it's a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Yes? Sagt hier in Vers 15, es ist ein Tag der Dunkelheit, der Finsternis, so von äh, Trauer und äh, äh, Wolken und dichtes Finsternis. So, keep your finger here, please. Let us go to Joel 2, just to see the comparison. So, halte den Platz hier. Gehen wir zu Joel 2, um dies, äh, diesen Vergleich zu sehen. Chapter 2, Vers 1 und 2. Kapitel 2, von Versen 1 und 2. Says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And now in verse 2 he explains this day. Right? A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Right? Exactly the same words. Okay. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, that not have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Okay, good. So, and also let us go to Amos. Gehen wir auch zu Amos. I think it's chapter five. Amos chapter five. Yes. In verse 18, verse 18. In verse 18. Speaking here to the wicked, okay? Er spricht hier zu den Bösen. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay? So it's this day of darkness and thick darkness and gloominess and clouds. Okay. It's this day of darkness and dichte, dunkelheit and void. So, but obviously only to the class that gets punished, right? But natürlich nur für diejenigen, also die Klasse oder die Gruppe, die bestraft wird. Okay. Are we to desire the second coming of Christ? Sollen wir das zweite Kommen Christi verlangen? Ja, wir begehren. Yes. Okay. yes. So, yeah. Ja, aber wir sollen aber für mehr Zeit auch bitten. Yes, exactly. Okay. But those that are wicked and desire the day of the Lord, the Lord says, why do you desire this day of your destruction? Okay. Mm -hmm. Diejenigen, die böse sind und begehren den Tag des Herrn herbei, der Herr sagt, warum begehrt ihr das herbei? Das ist euer Zerstören. Okay. Like with the rabbis, what did Sister White say about the rabbis? Genauso wie die Rabbiner, was sagt der Ellen White über sie? Uh, they thought when 
Nation, Rose Against Nation. Okay. Also sie dachten, wenn Nation gegen Nation aufbegehren, das wäre das Zeichen ihrer Befreiung. Das okay. wäre das Zeichen ihrer Befreiung. Werden. But this White says in reality was the sign of their coming destruction. Okay. Also in Realität, sagt Ellen White, es war eher das Zeichen ihrer Zerstörung. Okay. So, now let us go back to Zephaniah 1. So gehen wir zurück zu Zephaniah 1. And you also can, for your own notes, you can mark for Zephaniah 1.15, you can mark down Deuteronomy 4.11. Okay. Für eure eigenen Notizen in Bezug auf Zephaniah 1.15, ihr konntet äh, fünfte Buch Mose 4, Vers 11 dazu markieren. Because this is when the Lord came down on Sinai in these thick clouds, in great darkness and All these things. Das ist da, wo der Herr auf den Berg Sinai herabkam, in diesen dichten Wolken und Finsternis und all solches. Und wir wissen, Psalm 68 sagt, wenn er auf den Berg Sinai kam, dann hat er Himmel und Erde und dann hat er diesen plentiful Regen gegeben. Wir wissen, im Psalm 68, wenn er auf den Berg Sinai herabkam, er hat, ähm, den Spät der, der hat Himmel und Erde erschüttert und den Spätregen ausgegossen. Which is then the Pentecost mm -hmm. for God's people. Right? Das ist eben Pfingsten für Gottes Volk. Okay. So, uh, Zephaniah 1, and then verse uh, 16 to 18. So, Zephaniah 1, and then the verse 16 to 18. It says, A day of the trumpet, an alarm against the fenced cities, and against the high towers. So, it's against the high towers, yes? So, it's against the high towers. So, let us go to Isaiah. Keep your finger here, Isaiah 30. Halte den Platz hier und geh zu Jesaja 30. Let us begin in verse 15. Wir fangen in Vers 15 an. It says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. So, in returning and rest, they would be saved, right? So, in zurückkehren und Ruhe, ihr werdet gerettet werden. That's why the prophets always say, return unto me, right? So, deswegen sagen die Propheten immer, kehre zu mir zurück. And Malachi said, return unto the Lord, give the tithe. Right? Und Malachi sagt, kehre zum Herrn zurück und zahle den Zehnten. Jeremiah, uh, Joel said, return unto the Lord. Yes. Joel sagte, kehre zum Herrn zurück. Zephaniah said, those that didn't return, they get punished. Okay. Zephaniah sagt, diejenigen, die nicht zum Herrn zurückgegangen sind oder gekehrt sind, würden bestraft, waren bestraft. Okay, so returning and rest. Yeah, what is the rest? So, im Zurückkehren und Ruhe. Was ist die Ruhe? Yeah, the refreshing, right? And what do they say in Isaiah 28 about the rest? In Isaiah 28 über die Ruhe? Yeah, will not hear. Right? Wir werden es nicht hören. And here it says, "Ye would not." Okay. Hier sagtet ihr wolltet oder würdet nicht. Yeah, Jeremiah 6:16 also says. Yeah. And, and also verse 17, right? 17. Verse 17 says, "Hearken to the sound of the trumpet," and they said. We will not hark. Horcht zum Geschall von Posaune und sie sagten, wir würden nicht horchen. Joel's trumpet, right? Das ist der gleiche Posaune wie Joel. Okay. So, now let us go back to Isaiah 30. Jetzt Jesaja 30. Vers 16. Und Vers 16. But he said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Yeah, they trust in human strength. Sie vertrauen auf Menschenkraft. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. Zedekiah, so Zedekiah that he fled on a horse, but they caught up with them and took him to Babylon. Yes. Zedekiah had that also done, he was on a horse, he took him to Babylon. Yes, it's a swift nation that will come against them, right? It's this hasty and bitter nation in Habakkuk, right? Swift like an eagle fly, it says. Eilige oder hastige. Schnell. Schnelle Nation. Ja, swift, die, schnell. Gegen ähm, die ich ankommen werde. Und die sehe. Hasty and bitter nation. Also, es ist eine hastige, so eine bittere Nation. Okay. Um, Vers 17. Vers 17. 
One thousand shall flee at the, re at the rebuke of one, at the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. What will he have? Mercy. Right, but he will wait. Okay? That's why you need to have patience. Right? Yes? Amen. Isaiah 30, verse 18. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Right? The tarry until the end. Yes? Wartet bis zum Ende. To the end of the 13, 13, 5. Ende von 30, 35. Verse 19. Verse 19. For the Lord shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, thou shalt weep no more, he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And so on and so forth, and jump down now to verse 25. Yes, verse 25. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. So what will fall? Was wird fallen? Vers 25. The towers. Türme. Okay. So, and here when we go back to Zephaniah 1, when we zurück to Zephaniah 1 gehen, it says there's a great slaughter and the towers fall. Right? Sagt, es gibt eine große Schlacht und die Türme fallen. Yeah, the well, towers are just their false doctrines. Yes. The Türme sind ihre falsche Lehre. When Jerusalem got taken, was there a great slaughter? So, als Jerusalem eingenommen wurde, gab es da eine große Schlacht? Yeah. Yes. Well, over one million people died there. Right? Über eine Million Menschen sind dabei umgekommen. Uh, and also, it says in Ezekiel chapter 9. Und auch in Hesekiel Kapitel 9. Who goes after the man with the brightest ink on? Wer geht dem Mensch mit dem Schreibwerkzeug nach? Man with a slaughter weapon, right? So they will not spare old nor young. Okay. It's a great slaughter. So, and the towers come down. So let us read again Zephaniah 1:16. So Zephaniah 1, verse 16. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Yes. So let us go now to um, Matthew 21, I think it is. Yes. Matthew 21, verse 33. says, Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hatched it round about and digged the winepress in it and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. So what is this tower here? So what is this tower did he hear? Yes, as the white says, it was the temple. And the white okay. said, this was the temple. Okay. So... When the towers come down, it's illustration of the temple in Jerusalem got destroyed. So okay. the Türme fallen, this is a Darstellung von wenn den Tempel in Jerusalem zerstört yeah. wurde. Yeah, that would mm -hmm. be true. That the towers themselves it says there are tower builders in our time. Mm -hmm. Tower builders are ones that build up false doctrines. Yeah, we further then, but step by step, yeah, you're right. But so it's, it was the temple uh, that got destroyed. Okay. So, es die Turmbauern stellt äh, falsche Lehren da, aber es war eben der Tempel, der zerstört wird. And then we need to understand what does it mean. Okay. Und dann müssen wir eben verstehen, was das bedeutet. Uh, for us, okay. Für uns eben. So, a tower is a false doctrine, right? Ein Turm ist eine falsche Lehre. But also, is it just false doctrine? Aber ist es nur falsche Lehre? No, I'm just saying because literally the towers there in history was referring to these battlements on the wall, they had these huge towers that were the defense, right? So it's not speaking about the temple as a tower falling, although they're spiritually linked together, but 
just so you have to understand that it's towers, there was not there was not two temples. Like first comes an angel followed by the spirit and saying that these these towers also geistlich gesehen, diese Türme weisen schon auf den Tempel, aber in der Geschichte, diese Türme waren letztendlich diese Eckstücke von den Stadtmauern, von dem sie verteidigt haben und gekämpft haben. Also, und es sagt hier in der Mehrzahl Türme, es gab keine zwei Tempel in dem Sinne. Okay, yes, that's good. The point is that the towers are in the wall. The wall is a symbol of the law. So the law is, is the Bible. Die Türme sind Teil des Mauers. Der Mauer ist ein Symbol für das Gesetz. Das Gesetz ist die Bibel. So we have in Ezekiel, it says this, he built this wall within the temple of Mordor. It's the same as these towers, there, these false towers. So in Ezekiel gab es diese Mauer, die mit ungetünchten Mörtel ähm, getüncht haben. Und das ist derselbe mit diesen, wie diesen Türme, diese falsche Türme eben. So, I, I, so I'm not, I'm not, neglect, I'm not denying the fact that it, it's referring par parallel to when the, the, the temple is destroyed. But I'm just saying that you're going to be precise. These towers are not referring to the temple. They're referring to false doctrines, just like the false wall. So the verneinen is that this um, vergleich with the um, Zerstörung des Tempels is. Aber so nach den natürlichen, zuerst der Geistlichen, wenn man genau sein will, diese Türme sind ein Sinnbild für falsche Lehren. Faust Deutsch, did you say something else? Also so dasselbe wie der Mauer. Yes. I mean, the point is that the false doctrine, when Christ says, not one stone shall be left upon another, right? Also, als Christus sagt, also falsche Lehren, als Christus sagt, kein Stein wird auf dem anderen hinterlassen werden. So, what does it mean? Was bedeutet das? Who are the stones? So, wer sind die Steine? If you don't shine, it's a bright yeah. light. Yes, it's it's God's people, so right? Gottes Volk. Yeah, but yeah. God's people, yeah, when we come here to the harvest. Aber Gottes Volk, wenn du hier zum Ernte ankommst. Yeah, you have wheat and tares, yes. Weizen und Unkraut. And what does Sister White say about the tares at the White. harvest? Über das Unkraut bei der Ernte. They look the same until the harvest, and then you can tell the difference of standing tall and proud, whereas the wheat's bent over and humble. Yes, okay, but what? Yeah, the embodiment of error, okay? Also, über den Unkraut, sie sind die Verkörperung des Irrtums. So, the, therefore, in this sense, uh, when you can link these things together, right? These towers, these tower builders. False doctrines, but also this tower, this temple in Jerusalem. In this sense, can you these things together bring? Also, these Türme, these Turmbauern, these false lehrern, but or lehren, and but also the temple in Jerusalem, on which no stone is left behind. So, yeah, they are brought down simultaneously. Okay. They are brought down simultaneously. Okay. Good. So, yeah, so we can see, yeah, towers being brought down, and the destruction of Jerusalem. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Malachi chapter 3, right? Malachi chapter 3. So let us go there. In the dahin. Malachi 3. Malachi 3. It's now the last few thoughts that we look at. In Malachi 3, verses 1 to 4. Malachi 3, die Versen 1 bis 4. What is it speaking about? Über was spricht es? Yeah, he comes suddenly to his temple, right? And he is now like a refiner's fire. Yes? Okay, and he makes this final cleansing work. And it's the investigative judgment of the living, right? Okay. So. Therefore, verse 4 brings you to the end of the investigative judgment. Because it says, Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Right? So, when you come to the end, what is now your offering? Yeah, pleasant to God. And that's why on Mount Carmel, the fire came down and consumed it. Right? Deswegen am Berg Kamel fiel das Feuer vom Himmel und hat es auf verzehrt. It was offered on the altar of the twelve stones. Yeah, Jerusalem offered it. Okay. Altar von diesen zwölf Steinen geopfert worden. Also Jerusalem hat es geopfert. Okay, but then what does it say in verse five? Was sagt es in Vers fünf? Just the way it says verse five is the executive. Yes, exactly. Also okay. und was sagt das Vers fünf, dass Ausführung des Gerichtes sei. You can note GC 425.3 if you want. Okay. Du kannst dazu notieren, große Kampf 5, 425.3. 425.3. 425.3. English numbering. Okay, in English speeches. Okay. Das sind auf die englische Seite. Okay, it says verse 5. Vers 5. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against the false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So what will he do? A speedy riddance. Yeah, he makes a speedy riddance, right? He's a swift witness against them. Okay. okay, so one class will offer this perfect offering, the other class will be punished and destroyed, right? Die eine Klasse wird diese perfekte Opfer darbringen, die andere Klasse zerstört. Okay, this destruction will come immediately as soon as it is done, right? So diese Zerstörung wird sofort folgen, sobald es getan ist. Okay, so now go back to Zephaniah 1. So gehen wir zurück zu Zephaniah 1. And let us read verse 17 once more. Verse 17, ein weiteres Mal. It says, And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Okay, so what are they? They are not blind men. Yes? Since they sind wie blinde. Okay, so what did Jesus say in John 9? Was sagte Jesus in Johannes 9? So let's go to John 9. Yes. Verse 39 to 41. It says, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see no. thank you, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should ha you should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore, your sin remaineth, right? So when you're blind and remain blind, your sin remains, right? When you blind bist and blind bleibst, then bleibt auch deine Sünde. So, therefore, let's just turn back one more time to Zephaniah 1. We'll go back to Zephaniah 1 zurück. 
So we can see, therefore, because in verse 17 it says there are now these blind men forever. Therefore, now this speedy riddance will come upon them. Okay? Neither gold nor silver shall be able to deliver them. Okay. Weder Gold noch Silber ist imstande, sie davon zu befreien. Yeah, because in James 5, what does it say? In Jakobus 5, was sagt es? Uh, about the rich man. Über der Reiche. Go to go to the rich man and weep and howl. Exactly. Okay. Geht du reicher Mann und heult und klagt. And who are the rich men weeping and howling here for in the destruction of Jerusalem? Und wer sind die Reichen, die hier heulen und klagen in der Zerstörung Jerusalems? Yes, exactly. The Laodiceans that rejected the straight testimony, right? Die Laodiceern, die die geradlinige Zeugnis abgelehnt haben. Okay. So they get punished here. Sie okay. werden hier bestraft werden. But it's interesting, uh, we don't have now the time, but you can look for yourself in Isaiah 13, verse 17, for instance. Und das ist interessant, also kannst das selber nachschlagen in Isaiah 13, Vers 17. That speaks about the punishment on Babylon. Da spricht es über die Bestrafung von Babylon. And that also says the silver and gold will not save them. Okay. Da sagt es auch, die Silber und Gold werden ihn nicht retten. Okay, so see over, over and over again. First, the Jew, then the Gentile. Okay. Und diesem Prinzip können wir wieder und wieder sehen, zuerst der Jude und danach der Heide. But God is not a respect of person, therefore he deals with the Jew the same as he deals with the Gentile. Okay. Gott schaut nicht der Person an, also er geht auf derselbe Weise mit der Jude um wie der Heide. That's why we see always the same thing here Mark, as we see here. Deswegen können wir immer dasselbe hier markiert sehen, wie auch hier. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we can see Zephaniah 1. It's just a parallel to Joel chapter 1 and 2. Okay? So we can see that Zephaniah 1 is a parallel to Joel chapter 1 and 2. Warns against the day of the Lord for Jerusalem. Warn, it is a warning against the day of the Lord, a warning for Jerusalem. And Lord willing, we will continue in chapters 2 and 3. And there you can see obviously punishments now coming on the heathen. Okay? So, God wish, we will continue with chapter 2 and 3. Dort kannst du sehen, wie die Bestrafung dann auf die Heiden fällt. Just like in Joel chapter 3. Genauso wie in Joel Kapitel 3. Amen. Amen. Okay. Then let us close with prayer. Dann lass uns mit Gebet Schluss machen.